Uh, first away league game of the season, a trip to Loftus Road. Second. <laughs> first first away league. league. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did say league. I did say league. Um, yeah, first away league game of the season, uh, trip to Loftus Road. That must be something to look forward to. Yeah, listen, it always is. Uh, again, especially you know when you've come off the back of a defeat, you want to get going again. Uh, another long away trip, but look, we we have to do it. Um, and we're really looking forward to it. Listen again, you know. It'll be new for them, new for us, because they're playing a, a different ground along with us. Uh, Loftus, Loftus Road's a, a great little stadium to play at, um, and it's one we're looking forward to all year. Uh, I asked you before the Blackpool game, I asked you again after Blackpool game, I mean, was there anything that you learnt from the level of League One from, from the Blackpool match? Yeah, listen, we learn every time we play, don't we? Even the other night, you know, you learn in every game you play, every game you win, every game you lose, every game you draw, it's a learning curve. Uh, we know the opposition of qualities and different levels, whether clubs or players think they're better than our players and we think they're better than theirs is, is you know, up for debate. Uh, but we know we're in a competitive league and Wimbledon, AFC Wimbledon will certainly be competitive uh, along with Blackpool was. So it's a challenge we're looking forward to. It might be a different style of football, but again, it's one we're relishing. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. What are you expecting from Wimbledon? Well, listen, we don't want to give, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll plan what we need to plan. We'll plan what we feel. They'll come up with again. You know, you, you never always expect the unexpected, as we always say to the lads. They're different. They do go back to front quite quick. Um, they get bodies behind the ball. But again, that's up to us to have a game plan to try and break that down. We will respect them as we always do, but we ain't going to fear them. We're going to go toe to toe. Uh, along with they'll be the same as us. They'll want to go toe to toe with us. So again, it's up for an exciting game. Maybe different styles, like, uh, different clashes, different styles. Uh, but we're going there full of confidence in the league, full of confidence even after the other night, the first half displays. And we want to try and win as many games as we possibly can on the road. Where are you at with Luke Jeff, Scott? Oh, I don't know, yeah. I haven't spoke to the physio. Um, yeah, it was, Jeff's will probably be, I don't, don't know for, a, for, for, um, for certain, but obviously precaution the other night, uh, he definitely weren't ready for then. Um, I'll speak to Dave, we've got, a, we've got a meeting at 12 o'clock, so I'll speak to Dave then and we'll take it from there. I can't see him being ready for the weekend, but again, we'll just have to wait and see, see where he's on. And otherwise, injury-wise, uh, as far as you know, you're as you were? Yeah, all fine, yeah. We're hoping to have Reevesy back available, potentially. Um, and then we'll, we'll take that, we'll, we'll know again more this afternoon. Uh, and then apart from that, we're, we're all fine. Now, the Green Army, under normal circumstances, would absolutely love to go to a stadium like Loftus Road. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great shame that they can't be, can't be there. It is, yeah. I, again, I think, um, I don't know how we're going to do it, but I think we've got to get away from the, the situations of the fans. We, you know, we, we can't have them in. You know, we're gutted that they can't be there. We, we want them rallying us on, and especially at home and away from home. And will it help some clubs? Yeah. Will it disadvantage some clubs? Yeah, certainly. Uh, but all we've got to do is just worry about what we do on the pitch. I think, you know, the quicker we can get them back, as I keep saying, the better. But at this moment in time, we're, we're governed by the government. so. You know, we want to get them back as quick as we possibly can, but unfortunately, we, you know, the government dictates that. Sure. I mean, is it a worry to the club as a whole, though? Because long term, football's not sustainable if you can't get fans inside the ground, and it doesn't look at the moment like the coronavirus situation is going the right way. Um, no, I don't think so. Not from what the club put out a few weeks ago that the chairman backed the club and put some money in to say that we're, we're, we're financially stable. So. Uh, I've been told otherwise, and I think that that's going to be the case. Yeah, the quicker we get them back, the more money the club will um, get and start to you know to get people through the gates and revenue and whatnot. Uh, of course, but at this moment in time, I think this football club's in a financial stable position. Other clubs may be a bit different, but I think for us we're, we're quite okay. Thank you, right. Um, Gary Sawyer's situation, Yeah, so Gaz had a scan on uh, on Monday, but we've got to see he's got it's it's better than first thought. <laughs> In all honesty, we thought it was a bit of a bad one, yeah, and he's going to see a specialist on Friday tomorrow to get a specialist opinion. Um, so we're hoping such wood that it's not as bad as first feared. Uh, there's definitely no breaks in there as we've known. There is ligament damage in there, but we want a special specialist opinion on it rather than me and Dave talking about it and Gaz. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's such wood. It's, it's not too long. Is it something where you're looking to trying to? Bring in another defender to, to cover for Gary. Possibly, yeah, but it, it has to be it has to be the right fit. Um, it has to be the right criteria. It has to be the, the right amount of money because <laughs> uh, they're obviously the, the, the um, salary cap and everything else. So 
we, we'll wait, we won't make no rash decisions. I think there's 18 days or something, as they have seen yesterday, he left. So, so not fortnight tomorrow, isn't is it? it? So yeah. we're not we're not really in a major rush, Chris. We'll we'll see where Gaz is at and see how long he's going to be. And uh, we've got room for manoeuvre one one or two more potentially. That's only if needed, though. So mm. we'll um, we'll see where that takes us. It, at least it's encouraging. It's, it's not as bad because you know a break or some really bad ligament damage, and you can be out for a very long time, can't you? Do you know what? Sometimes depends because if it's a break, it just heals dead quick. Mm. Could be better. If it's a uh, ruptured ligament, mm. is, is a danger. Yeah. If it's a torn ligament, which is not as bad. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, listen, we've got some good news on it because there's not really that much going on. But mm. we want the specialist to have a look at it and to see where he can tell us what's what. Uh, but obviously, everything prolonged business. We have to wait for the scan because yeah. of all the stuff, and, and we get it. There's no way we're nowhere near first priority. Um, but what we do have to do is make sure we get the right the right specialist opinion on it to make sure that we don't say oh he's going to be six weeks or 12 weeks and make sure he's going to say what he's going to be and that's what we'll do we'll know that tomorrow and just one more question on the injuries at Luke McCormick is there any sort of no, timeline so on him or we're, anything we're just debating with Luke now whether to give him an operation to be honest um, because obviously it's not gone to plan the shoulder what we'd like to have to, to, to done with it um, so we're, we're speaking with Luke and Dave again, but that's all down to the specialists. All I get told is this yeah. is happening and that's happening. Mm. Um, so we may have to, we may just have to go out and clean the shoulder out in there. I think it's just old age in it, <laughs> them shoulders. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, we'll let the specialists look at that one also, and maybe if he decides to just clean it out, so there's no real stuff going on in there that's going to continue to to struggle training and playing games. We'll make sure we do the right thing. I don't know if you've seen the news this morning about Neil Warnock and um, testing positive for, for COVID-19. Um, is, is that is that new, new news to you? It is news yeah. to me, yeah. So he's, he's tested positive. Apparently he's in good spirits. He's going to be in self-isolation as guidelines. Um, everything seems OK, apart from the fact that he's tested positive And obviously lots of people are, are sort of wishing him well. So I've slightly sprung it on there, <laughs> you there, but you know you obviously <laughs> would join everyone in football in wishing Neil a speaking. Yeah, of course, company. yeah, you don't want to see anyone get it, but again, it, you know, sometimes that the virus, you can have no symptoms, can you? And, yeah. and you've got it. So, no, listen, to the first I've heard, so I wish him all the best. I'm sure he'd be fine. He'd be, uh, he'd be right as rain. Mm. He might have just wanted a few days off, mightn't he? <laughs> <laughs> nah, joking. I think yeah. no. We wish him all the best. He'd be, I'm sure he'd be fine. You saw him um, recently, and um, you know he's he's someone that has this football club. Uh, he still has a big part in his heart for this football club, doesn't he? I'm sure you. Gary yeah, he does. Yeah, until I seen something on social media where he said I badly want to be Plymouth. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Who was he managing then? Oh, well, it was the Sheffield United. Yeah. But again, look, well, that's his. That's yeah, his team, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, look, he has. Yeah, he's. Uh, he's. I've only come across him twice, and the first time was at one of the games, and he he praised us for how well we play and what we do and how we go about our business, and then obviously we spent. A few days with him when he was down here, we played against him on the pitch and in house, you know, three thirty minutes. So now he's a great guy. I wish him all the best and hopefully he gets free from COVID nineteen very soon. How often are you and the players being tested at the moment? Um, well, we got tested didn't we, a couple of weeks ago, so I think that's it. Now the, the protocols change all the time, mm. um, so I think we're fine. We're, we're staying in our bubble yet. The lads will you know, go for food and do whatever and with the families, but in our bubble certainly. I think we're, we're okay. We just got to make sure that you know we do all the right things and the social distances and whatnot. And um, touch wood, we, we we don't have any, but we've been tested probably what six times then. Yeah, it's coming twice. Yeah, five or six times. Mm-hmm. We got tested twice in, in in two or three days when we went up to Glasgow. Mm-hmm. That's because the protocols wanted us to. But yeah, we're, we're we're fine, mate. As I say, look, some some might have it, some might not know the virus and. Mm-hmm. But we've just got to go with the guidelines, and if we stick to the guidelines, I'm sure we'll be okay. With the numbers going up, is is it inevitable that this club, <laughs> other clubs, are going to be impacted? It's happened in Scotland, hasn't it? For example, I mean, how how do you feel about that as as a manager? That at any time, you, I hope it doesn't happen. You know, in touch with it doesn't, but your phone could ring at any time, couldn't it, and say X can't play because of you know, it's tested positive. Who players? Yeah. Well, we're not getting tested again, so we won't know. No, okay. Yeah, but again, I, I don't know. That's not my department. My department's the football, and we'll just stick to football and do what we need to do. I think you know them questions are for someone else. I think Chris, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, we, as again, we just got to follow the, the guidelines and see what it is. Are uh, we worried that it might get stopped again? Well, there's a, there's a possibility, but I think that 
the rates in testing's going up, aren't they? Yeah. Because everyone's getting more tests. Yeah. Uh, there's not many deaths, which that's the most important thing in, in this climate that, you know, there's not people dying. People with the virus, we're hoping that can come through it. So I think in the football department, in the football world, we've just got to worry about what we're doing and make sure we stay healthy and, and do the right things in, in the outside world. We've got to just let, let the government and let everyone else in the NHS do a fantastic job like they've done, continue to do and continue to do. And then I'm sure we'll be OK. I see there's uh, nine clubs holding test events for fans this weekend in, in the FL, I think three in the Championship, three in League One and three yeah. in, in, in League Two. Um, is that a good step? You know, you, you're pleased to see that at least a thousand people will be see, getting into games? I'm pleased to see anyone in, really. <laughs> yeah. uh, but again, it, it's, 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 it's not fair, is it? Because we've got probably, we could have, I don't know, if, if the gates open tomorrow, I'm sure we'd have this packed to the rafters, yeah. wouldn't we? Yeah. So it's not fair on the fans, but... Yeah, I think it's a start. It's a start in the right direction that you know we want to go in and the test events whenever we can get ours on, and, and the quicker we get the fans back, the better. And um, when that'll be, we, we we don't really know. But as I say, look, we you know yourself being here, it's, it's rubbish in it really. But I've got fans. It's um, and I can't say that because it is. It's not good. Um, and yeah, the quicker we get them back, the better really. Um, but we have to wait on the EFL guidelines and, and government guidelines and wait and see where it comes, when it comes. I sort of feel privileged to be here because I know lots of people would like to Imagine be here. you not having any press. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be tearing more here, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's not, there's not, not much left to, to tear out here, is it? But I feel privileged to be here, but equally, is it a particularly satisfying, rewarding experience? I think it's, it's so... Weird is the only way to describe yeah. it, isn't it? The whole thing on a match day. Yeah, it is, mate. I mean, to go to Orient on Tuesday, you could have, I've sat with Dan, you could have heard a pin drop at yeah. times. It was just... You can. It's just... You can, yeah. But again, it, it is, it's tough, and we, we, we certainly, you know, again, don't we want the fans in, as we want them, mm -hmm. you know. There's, there's going to be times where they're going to need to help us, you know what I mean? And, and, and again, you know, that's why we want them, because they are our 12th man, and... and, and you know, we need to make sure that when they are here, they will do that and they stick with us and, and back us. I know, I know that for a million percent, they will. Mm. Uh, but it is, it's, it's, it's tough, isn't it? Because there's no one in and there's no fans and you know, even family, you know, family and friends who come to games, you want, you want them around you, you want them to get the same buzz as you. I think at the moment, the buzz for us is being new into League One. Um, and, you know, that's the buzz for us. You know, we want to keep that going. Um, but again, we need the buzz next time for when the fans get here as well, and, and it's packed to the rafters and they're singing the lads' songs and the G and the boys on, and but that's what we want because that's what this football club's about. So it is weird, yeah. If if people are still going to pubs and restaurants and things like that, surely there's a case that you could get four or five thousand people in the Good open job. He's not sitting here now. <laughs> in football ground, can you? I mean, it's one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. But. Mm -hmm. Who am I to say yeah, and who am I to say no? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just the manager of the football club and get told what to do. Mm. Well, I don't get told what to do, but I mean in terms of when we can have fans in the yeah. club get told what to do. Mm. So, yeah, it's disappointing, but I agree with you, mate, 100%, that there's people out there, there's, you know, there was a circus on over there last mm. week. I don't know how many fits in the circus, but... Now, nah, listen, the quicker we get them back, the better. <laughs>